Shalom, shalom. So good to be here with y'all. How is everybody? We're here for our Monday's um, anchor message where we take a look at our spiritual lessons for the week. We are using the Wild Unknown Archetypes Oracle with the Mystical Moments Tarot to clarify. So yeah, let's get into the reading. Um, wow, like between the anchor message that gives us like the lessons we'll be working with through the week and then last night's weekly um, energy oracle forecast, like really nice, good things are possible this week. And I think it starts at the seed level and the foundation. And I think that this week is the week that we start to have a significant shift on the inside that is starting to shift us in a new direction that's going to start materializing on the outside. <clears throat> I happen to just like come across one of these really great readers that I like on TikTok. I think her name, I think this one was by Courtney Hennigan and she had a vision that was perfect. It was a perfect illustration of the way that this period of time, the last couple of two or three few weeks have been feeling. It, she's like, it feels like you are stuck, like seat, seated in a train and everything is stopped and it's come to a halt. Like you're on a journey and it's like all of a sudden you just feel like everything's come to like a halting stop and it feels like a stalemate. You're like, whoa, am I slowing down? Am I behind? Am I off track? And she was like, basically what's happening is like, she was like, I'm seeing these people like sitting on a train and although it feels like nothing is happening because they're just sitting there for like an out, like a delay, the tracks are shifting. And so once the train starts going again, they're going to be on a completely different track. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is such a poignant visual. I loved it, but that's exactly how it feels. And so it feels like right now the shift is going to come first with this inner sense of well-being and this kind of solidness that we find ourselves getting into. You know, we've been practicing the idea of faith beyond reason. Imuna is the Hebrew word. It's like faith that transcends logic, Tr uh, faith beyond what you can see, faith that is beyond hope, faith that is beyond belief, but it's a faith that is a choice to choose that knowing. So it's like we've been building the certainty and now it's really establishing roots um, inside of us. And so now I feel that we are not feeling as affected by circumstance. We're not feeling those highs and lows where it's almost more like there's a very like stable, steady, even keel happening that is becoming our new like base level, our new normal, our new, you know, a comfortable setting is at contentment <laughs> and then fulfillment and then ecstatic uh, at times and appreciative and grateful, but there's ease, there's harmony, there's flow happening. So, and it's been on the other side of <clears throat> devoted inner work and sticking to our our practices and our studies and our seeking and our seeking after our own shadows, our own darkness. So the first card that came out of the Wild Unknown Archetypes was the Starborn, followed by the King, followed by the lover, and then underneath Starborn, we've got Ten of Cups. Underneath King, we've got the Star. And underneath Lover, we've got Ace of Cups. 
I mean, textbook, people. <laughs> it's kind of like right on the nose. So the Starborn card, uh, I love this card. This is the card that talks about our destiny. And when we're born, I just want to wrap on about this for a second. Destiny and fate and our ast astrological natal charts. So when we're born, we're born under a set of stars. All of the causal powers of the cosmos are crowned over us in such a way. Um, and the energetic astrological influences are what they are when we're born. And so when you get your natal chart uh, generated, you can see like what your sun sign is, your rising sign, your moon, um, you know, where your planets are based on what your houses are and then what signs fall in those houses. And so through this chart, you can tell a lot about your personality, your strengths, your shortcomings, and then maybe like pivotal plot points that might play out in your life as well as very strong themes. Now, in, uh, in Kabbalah, the Hebrew um, word for karma or the idea that's similar to karma is called tikkun. And our tikkun is the process that our soul goes through life after life. It's almost like our, our, our file that just keeps following us. And it's all of our strengths and all of our weaknesses and our shadow aspects and our mistakes and everywhere where we're like have an overabundance of this virtue and it's a, you know, it's a vice. And then we have, you know, an, an under, you know, and, and that virtue and that's a vice. And so it's like we're bringing these parts within ourselves into balance. And through these lifetimes, we have already have like these scripts laid out with these people that are going to be important players in our lives, key players, and we have soul contracts with them. And we are like put into these scenarios and it's kind of like the, the show Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? Where they have an outline of the scene, but ultimately the characters get to improvise and see where it goes. And so that's where our free will comes in. But we're not even using our free will until so we learn how to master the art of cause consciousness versus effect consciousness. And we might have moments of lucidity, but for the most part, we're just going around like living our faded path. We're reacting when things happen. We believe the, the big illusion that's being projected uh, on the flesh screen and the, in the world of the flesh. And we are in complete reactivity instead of being cause which is un, unmoved, unchanging, where we have that steady level um, <clears throat> vibration, like we were talking about, finding that base level of contentment, which is more like the creator. The creator is the cause, right? Let there be light, the cause of all creation, all reality. Never to be affected by anything, the light is eternal, unwavering, unchanging, unfluctuating, unending, unconditional, right? So in order to be cause, we have to become eternal, unwavering, unconditional, perpetual, not changing, not conditional, not this way in one minute, that way the next. It's like we've got to be in control, in possession of our consciousness. And we don't have to stuff our feelings down. We can have our feelings um, and we can feel our feelings to their absolute highest volumes. But we have a choice about how we act and how we react to those feelings. And so when we can detach and observe and pause and be like, why? What is the significance of all of this playing out? What am I seeing in this? Okay, now I'm going to choose with sovereignty with consciousness, not in my animalistic instincts, you know, reaching for instant gratification, trying to fix it now, I'm in a panic, FOMO, buy now, <laughs> while supplies last, ah. like, no, <clears throat> I'm gonna be a sovereign, I'm gonna be king over my kingdom, I'm gonna be king over my consciousness, and creator is ultimate king, right, but like, as far as being the vessel for the creator, we have to be king, like the creator is king, so, Back to the idea of destiny versus fate. Tikkun. 
So over lifetimes, we correct our soul and we go through experiences that transform our negativity into positivity. And we break these layers of darkness um, that are sort of veiling and shielding our inner light, which is that inner light of the creator that shines through in our like ultimate expression of our highest potential, our higher selves, right? So at, every time we get to like do some alchemizing of our um, negative traits, our negative behavioral and thought patterns and beliefs and emotions, and every time we transmute that darkness into something positive, we are revealing more of that light, becoming a little bit more like that higher self, and then we are shifting our destiny. So fate versus destiny. When you look at your natal chart, you can see a lot about your tikkun in your chart. It's like, this is the plot points, this is sort of the screenplay of your life, and it's in its outline form. And if you just sort of go through life and don't try to work on yourself, you don't try to heal, you don't have to try to self-discover and, and have deep self-analysis and you never try to um, heal or grow or change, then you're just going to be living out your faded path. And, you know, the things that you see in your astrological chart will probably play out essentially like that. <clears throat> However, when you take like ownership of your life and you take ownership of your soul and you start to work on your soul and your heart to become more like the creator and you start doing the work of alchemizing your darkness, then tick by tick, as we shed that negativity and become more and more like our higher self, Day by day, we get a little bit closer to that higher destiny that could be our, you know, p grand potential self living in that higher destiny, that higher path. So every night when we go to sleep, we, our soul ascends and we go to the upper realms and we, and we go to like have like a miniature judgment day and we, we meet with the team and we, you know, review the plays and they give us some commentary and they're like, how much did you try to transform today? You know, where did you overcome your selfishness or where did you do an act of sharing or, you know, where did you exact strength when you'd been weak before? You know, where, where have you grown? How have you evolved today? And so we kind of stand judgment, do that, that cleansing every night. It's like a purge. And then we come back and we're reborn every morning. Our soul restoreth to the body. There's actually a waking prayer that thanks God for fully restoring my soul. And then um, we are refreshed for the day. Well, it's interesting that the same thing happens in the brain, right? When you, you need a deep sleep for your soul to get the, the full like cleansing and restoration and be rejuvenated and be like recharged. Well, the brain does the same thing. The brain sends out um, chemicals and in, it uh, initiates the lymphatic system to purge the body of chemicals from the day and the stress and all of that. So it's like a big brain cleanse, nervous system cleanse at night, body cleanse. So it's interesting. So at night when we are, when we go before judgment, mini, miniature judgment day, they're like, okay, well, based on what we've talked about today, the, me and the writers, we're going to get together and decide how your script's going to go tomorrow. <laughs> And you're just like, Ugh. so you go back to sleep and then in your body and you wake up the next day and depending on how your, you know, how well your, your inner work is going and how, how your tikkun uh, judgment day went the night before, your script might be written, you know, a little bit better, right? Maybe you would have gotten a flat tire, but instead you're in an elevator with a celebrity, <laughs> Or like maybe you were going to get a parking ticket, but you get to like stand next to your um, like somebody that you're going to date or something in the bread aisle and like that's how you meet them, right? So you can shift your destiny, right? We don't have to resign ourselves to our faded path. The point of astrology is not to let it control us and have dominion over us, but as we evolve, as we transcend, as we elevate, we actually have 
um, we we become stronger than the astrology and we can overcome the astrology and we aren't actually being affected by the cosmic forces as much as the general public. Um, if you notice that now, it's like if you're a person who kind of likes astrology and you keep up with it, and you're kind of aware and conscious and you're, you know, uh, practicing consciousness, you know, with yourself, you might notice that you are prepared enough to not let the the effects of the astrology get under your skin or get, get, you know, get you thrown off track too much. You're prepared. But like, you'll notice that like the general public is all crazy and everybody's all running around everywhere in a clusterfuck, right? So starborn. So to me, starborn here with all these other car cards paired with 10 of cups tells me that Along with our other messages recently, it's like spirit, it's like, it feels like we're in the last leg of a race and like our spirit team and everybody's in the stands like, yeah, like go, 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 you're almost there. And we're just gaining momentum and it's a close race and everybody's like on the edge of their seat. And they're like, ah, so fulfillment is very close at hand. Um, just next level experiences with that inner peace that we were talking about, maybe having like aspects of your goals and manifestations coming through to where, you know, it's like you start living your dream life in phases. You're not like, you don't want to even arrive at your dream life having like the final like crescendo of the dream all like suddenly at once. It's like you, it's, it's fun to savor it in layers, right? Like, um, it's like, uh, for instance, in film, right? I, I had, essences of living my dream life even if it wasn't the peak of it it was like there were different levels of it along the way and it would come at different times and sometimes it would like you'd be like oh now I'm, I'm it's even more it's even greater it's even closer to my dream life but in the little ways when you can start appreciating it in small ways like you're already there like for instance I may not um have like the size of a channel that I hope to have at some point, but I still like, I don't think of myself as, well, I'm trying to be a, a YouTuber. Like this is like, I'm, I'm in it. Like, this is what I do. I live basically my dream life, even though it might not look like that to other people, but like I have the schedule I want. Like I have, like I eat great food. I love great food. Um, I pretty much do what I want. Like, I, I don't feel like a deep longing for anything that I'm not able to attain at this moment, you know, but there are still so much more that I want and that I'm achieving. So it's like, in a way, I have achieved my dream life, but it's only getting better from here. And so I recognize in small ways how I dream, I live a dream life. And it, like, this is, this is one really silly, but like a bit petty example, but it's so true. So... For instance, I um, have a kitchen that I don't love. Like it's got dark cabinets. It's like terrible. I, this is a rental. So it's not like I can't like paint the cabinets and um, it's just dark and it's awful. And there's nothing cute or special about anything that I have to look at when I'm cooking. But I realized that like I have a lot more counter space than a lot of people. And I, it struck me one day when I was like looking at Instagram because so Carrie, I don't want to like throw Carrie on, Carrie on Moss into the bus, but girl live in New York and they have like even wealthy people in New York City have tiny apartments and she was um, chopping vegetables on a chopping block in her kitchen where it was like a chopping block that she had to pull out. It was like a built in drawer. It was so neat. It was like and it came out as a, as a drawer chopping block because there was just like no counter space. And I was like, wow. Carrie Ann Moss is a wealthy, successful actress living in Manhattan. Or, you know, maybe she lives in Brooklyn. I don't know. But she lives in New York. And I have a bigger kitchen than her. <laughs> I'm living in the lap of luxury. <laughs> like, I have a kitchen that would make a Hollywood starlet <laughs> jealous. <laughs> oh, the luxury. <laughs> the opulence. You should think of it like that, right? You can get into like levels of being in your dream, right? 
if you want this dream wardrobe, maybe you don't have the whole thing yet, but like maybe you can get like a piece here and there that you've always wanted, you know, and live in that now without having to arrive at the finish line. It wouldn't even be any fun if all of a sudden you got to go, well, I mean, it would be its own version of fun, but it would be gone too fast if you got all the money you wanted to go on like the shopping spree and get every piece of clothes you ever wanted. You wouldn't be able to enjoy everything at once. It'd be like, well, you know, it's like Christmas when you're like, well, I like this thing. And you just like kind of like get attached to that one thing and everything else is just sitting there like, well, you were so excited before, you know, it's like you just can't, you know, enjoy everything at once. So you, you like be in fulfillment, right? Stages, feeling the fulfillment coming in. And then in small ways, things are going to start materializing. And I think it's going to start building momentum. And I think that it's coming from this like, De devotion and dedication and consistency with our self-mastery. The king here, we had king of pentacles in our daily reading. We had like knight of pentacles the day before. It's just like all of this like very um, like high self-worth, like, like healthy masculine energy that is all about like taking action and sharing and our expression out in the world and like material security and inner security, um, emotional stability. And the star card here is like healing and hope and like major like life dreams coming true, like big, like destined moments and oh my god, I've waited my whole life for this. Like <laughs> I want star search. <laughs> like I was the star. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Star Search. It was like American Idol, but in the 80s. Um, it was before American Idol. And Alanis Morissette, she won an episode of Star Search. There was like a contest every night where you had to like battle it out with other talented people. Um, I don't know if it was like, I think that even like cross categories had to battle it out. But I might be wrong about that. It might have just been like song against song and like comedian against comedian. I'm not sure if they had like uh, like a diva against like a comedian. <laughs> anyway, neither here nor there. So like lots of healing, lots of like, like when I say healing, it's, it's like major like perception change, like, like game changing feeling of being different and on the other side of something and like having lived it, you just like can't unlive it. And like, you've just been like liberated from it. Like you're just feeling charged and having like this authority over yourself, um, this inner authority. And so you're like, now it's like our material conditions are starting to become more stable as we are like very stable and grounded and like emotionally sober um, on the inside, it's like it's starting to reflect in our outer world and like keep an eye out for maybe like special opportunities to come through. Also, the lover card here with Ace of Cups. There, there's there's a double message here because in the in the tarot, the lovers have to do with choices and the roads the major choices that we take in life that lead us on vastly different paths, this path or that path. It's like, it's, it's a, it's a two way kind of thing. There's a Y in the road and the choice we make now is going to have a major implication on the direction of our life. Right? So because of our healing and our grown wisdom and discernment and maturity and responsibility and dependability, We've been able to make better choices that are filling our life like with a return of like this emotional renewal and a lust for life. And we're having a different, different experiences now, more satisfying, more fulfilling, um, more opportunities for, you know, greater relationships uh, with all kinds of people in our life, all the like familial and, and, and friends and everything, coworkers, it's getting better. So just a renewal of emotion and spiritual um optimism and faith and 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 excitement but also in the wild unknown archetypes this the lover card is actually about a lover a feel at least the feeling of being like swooning and being swept off your feet by a lover 
And so this could mean a literal person that you have like a lot in common with could be coming into your life soon. Um, or it could mean that that feeling of inspiration and excitement is coming back into your life where you feel charged up and giddy, like you have a reason, you know, and a purpose and it's fulfilling and meaningful and you are aligning with your purpose. And so it's like you're also, it's like because you're aligning with your purpose, your greater destiny is starting to unfold. Just remember that if you feel stuck and if you feel like it looks like nothing's moving and nothing's changing, it's because you're sitting on a train, like Courtney said, and the tracks are changing. And when you start going again, it seems like nothing has happened, but you're going to be on, on a completely new track. So I'm very excited. I totally agree with that vision that she had. And I think that it goes right along with our kind of, trajectory the last couple of weeks too. So wanted to share that with y'all. All right, tomorrow we will be um, back for our weekly manifestation message where we will take a look at uh, how we should approach our goals and our manifestations. All right, y'all. Ciao. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.